Hey guys, Captain Levi here, finally done with this video. I'm so happy that I am too, because there's so much stuff to cover. I'm probably going to have to make two of these videos, but it's only just for your guys' sake, so I don't make like a 30 minute long video and then hardly have anybody come to it. But regardless, guys, this is the actual video for Final Fantasy 15 Fabula Nova Crystallis woven in. Uh, if you watch my previous video, that was just like a little teaser for this one. Uh... Basically, I'm just going to be covering a whole bunch of theories and facts and breaking down exactly what Fabula Nova is. And then I'm going to be going into the theories part. That's where y'all are really going to get a kick out of this because a lot of this stuff is going to make sense. So, um, for the most part, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just get a quick recap going of exactly what Fabula Nova Crystallis even is. Fabula Nova Crystallis is basically the... Interpretation of the original Crystal Evilus Alliance games, you know, Final Fantasy 1 through 4, but in a more modern setting for easier storytelling. <laughs> well, what was meant to be easier storytelling, but with the way 13 turned out to be, I think people got more confused with it. But with Fabula, th there's more than just sharing the same land as it was in the Evilus Alliance days. Uh, Fabula shares the same universe throughout the game Final Fantasy 13 and the games that were named Final Fantasy Agito 13 and Versus 13 later changed to Type 0 and Final Fantasy 15 because of the horde backlash Final Fantasy 13 that the fans gave back to Square so uh, one thing that is supposed to be consistent in Fabula Nova Crystallis is indestructible crystal and crystal matter Fabula Nova Crystallis is Latin and translates directly to a new tale of the crystal. That's why Ragnarok is able to go straight into lava without <laughs> melting. He's made out of straight crystal. Yeah, so crystal is at the core of each of these games, but what separates Fabula from Ivalis even more is that Fabula Nova Crystallis has a reoccurring lore of a goddess named Etro and two other gods. Those gods being the god Linzai and the god Pulse. Linzai is the more malicious god, known as the Viper in Final Fantasy XIII. The Viper that bore its fang into into cocoon and just just is trying to end human humanity. Has no no remorse for humanity. Does not care for humanity at all. Well, you have Pulse, who actually nurtures who nurtures souls and actually builds uh, creates the planet that they live on so you can say pulse is in there too but thing is pulse does nothing to stop Lindsay. so god is the goddess etro is the one who always pities men this is what makes fabula nova crystallis are these three gods etro pulse Lindsay. so far so far th this has been in all, all the entries of Fa uh, Fa fabula nova crystallis these three gods have been present so far. So from purely speculating this, uh, there would be absolutely no Fabula Nova Crystallis without Etro, Pulse, and Lindsay. There would be no Fabula Nova Crystallis. But to go ahead and get this started and show you guys some of the you know, actual proof, some bear bag proof, some raw information. Let's go ahead and get into Final Fantasy 13's data log and go into the Analex area, which is like the mythology area of the game, and get everybody a little bit more familiar with the first taste of Fabula Nova Crystallis lore we have gotten so far. So let's go ahead and get into 13 real quick. All right, here we go, guys. I'm just going to open up my file real quick. We're going to go ahead and get straight into the analytics. Like I had said, uh, there's something I need to point out and go ahead and say. The most important ones in the analytics area are 1, 2, and 13. Because all three of these are have a author unknown. It is written by author unknown. And these actually have the most symbolic, or not symbolic, but most the more, most lore in them. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just read all of them for you guys. But, uh, but yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to go through the, I'm going to go through these main ones, which is one, two, you know, and 13, uh, the three that are, have author unknown. And then, uh, I'm going to read all of them all to you guys. And then I'm going to come back and 
explain what all of these mean. Well, the mo the only ones I'm going to be explaining I really need any explaining are 1, 2, and 13. Because the rest are just for 13. So here we go. Luminous lamented for creation spiraled onto doom. Stout fashioned earth, the future might take root. Sage turned mind's eye inward, seeking true profound. Fool desire not, and soon was made one with it. Maker forged foul sea from fragment maker's own. Maker forged man from traces once divine. That's 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 deep, because this takes place in both type zero and thirteen. But uh, in time the gods departed, leaving all by their hands wrought. Thou see, were as man forsaken, orphans of a maker absconded. So the gods left. The vanished gods. Number one. Alright. Lindsay's nest. El and lo, the viper Lindsay bore fangs into the pristine soil of the Grand Pulse. Dis despoiled the land from it and crafted a cocoon both ghastly and unclean lies spilled forth from the serpent's tongue within the shell lies paradise men heard these lies and were seduced and led away oh cursed are the fools who trust a snake and torn and turn their backs upon the bounty of pulses hollowed land for those who dwell in that cocoon are not men but slaves of the demon Lindsay. ye who on her pulse rise unto the heavens and cast down the viper's nest honestly i want to believe that's bartandalus who wrote this stuff but I don't I don't think so it might not be but yeah guys uh, I'm gonna go to number 12 door of souls all right when our earthly vessels meet their end the souls they house must leave this world could the path of their migration not be the same one taken by our departed gods must they not pass through the same doorway the divine employed to reach the that place that lies beyond if this is the case it stands to reason that should a great many lives at once be cut short a flood of souls would surge through the aforementioned portal the door would be thrown wide and perhaps we might even glimpse the gleaming light of divinity beyond all right so the reason i put number 12 in here is because it might not have a uh, it might not have the author unknown like 1, 2, and 13, which is the 13 is going to be the Fabula Nova Crystallis entry. Like, that's his actual name. But this one actually had exactly what happens in all the games. It's something that has is reoccurring. Is these gods are trying, well, in this game, Falci are trying to reach the gods in their divine realm and glimpse their light. That's, that's all that's happening in like all three games. That happens with Noctis. Well, that happened with Noctis in Versus 13 when it was him and Stella. And Stella would ask him, do you see the light? So, yeah. Um, let's go on to 13, which is, yep. Fabula Nova Cristalis. This is honestly going to be the last one for now for uh, Final Fantasy 13. But we still have some Type 0 stuff to cover. And I can't wait to get to that because... <laughs> that's really what's gonna bring everything together this is just this is still like an intro piece but regardless let's get it um children are hollowed pulse scour earth children of hollowed pulse scour earth searching substance for the door those of fel Lindsay harvest souls combing ether for the same so have i seen the door once shut was locked away with despair its secret key sacrifice the one hope of seeing it unsealed the one hope okay when the twilight of the gods at last descends upon this world what emerges from the unseeable expanse beyond that door will be but music and that devoid of words the lamentations of the goddess etro as she sobs her song of grief okay this is exactly what you see in type zero as well but in type zero there's something known as the nameless tome now there's something i wanted to bring into to this whole equation and by the end I'm, i know i'm gonna have to make two videos out of this but by the end of the second video y'all are going to see that the fabula nova crystallis logo itself it actually is a combination of of all the logos all the logos actually just depict a certain part of this whole entire image as in final fantasy 13 is actually the bottom 
Look at the Final Fantasy 13 logo, which has a nice little spiral at the bottom and Cocoon sitting up at the top, right? And then you have Final Fantasy Type-0, which has the goddess, the god Linza and the god Pulse on the other side touching this center part, which would in their world be Orients, and which Pulse and Linza actually are at. They're at that world. They're tempering. They're, they're actually messing with that world itself. As compared with Lightning's world, the gods there are not. They, they vanished a long time ago. That's why they made Foul C. That's why I made Foul C. But uh, I have a really crazy ass theory for you guys. And I'm going to have to just break all this down into the next video. I know this one's a little bit long and a little bit boring. But trust me guys, all this information is going to be needed to understand what the hell is going on in the next video. But uh, yeah guys, I appreciate everything. If you guys stop by and check this out. Just uh, just know that this video will be up as soon as possible because I'm pretty sure some of you guys are like, wow, that was a waste of time. Or you're going to be like, oh, damn it, I want to know the rest. So, um, yeah, guys, um, I'm about done here. I appreciate you guys stopping. But uh, Captain Levi, out. Peace.